Hey what's going on guys my name is Jim Fahd in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this amazing interactive portfolio section using Elementor page builder. So here on the left side we can see some icon boxes and on the right side we can see the portfolio image. Now from left side if I hover over on any icon boxes you see on the right side the images are changing like this. And this is a super creative way to showcase your portfolios. Let's say you have done some project related landing page so you can showcase that work on the right side. Let's say you have done some work on product designing, then hovering over on this product design item or icon box, you can showcase that product design work on the right side. And not only that, I will also show you how you can make it really really cool on mobile devices step by step. So without further ado, let's now go inside Elementor page builder. So right now we are inside Elementor page builder and in this tutorial I will be using Elementor flex container. So make sure from your WordPress dashboard from Elementor settings under the experiments tab make sure here the flexbox container option is active. Alright let's now go inside Elementor. Here first let's click on this plus icon and here I'm taking this two container structure. First of all I'm making the minimum height to 100 VH and then with this container I want to add some spacing so go under advanced tab from here unlink the padding only the right and left side I'm adding 80 pixel of padding. So here is our left container and here is the right container. So let's first select the left container because I want to reduce its width. So here I'm making its width to 35% and the right container, this one, I'm making its width to 65%. Let's now start with the left container, this one. First of all, I'm making its justify content to centered and here I'm making the gap to 10 pixel. Also, let's go under advanced tab, unlink the padding. Here on the right side, I'm adding 40 pixel of padding right. Then on all other side, I'm adding 10 pixel of padding. All right, let's now click on this plus icon. And here within here, I want to insert some icon boxes. So here I'm searching for icon box. Let's drag this icon box within here. And you know, I just want to use this icon and heading. So I'm removing this description from here. The first title, I want it to say landing page. Then from here, you know, you can change this icon with any other icon or also if you want, you can upload any SVG image here. So here I'm uploading some SVG images. I have uploaded all this, but for the first one, I'm selecting this SVG image and click on insert media. Then here, let's scroll down icon position. I'm setting it to left. All right. Now I want to do some styling. So go under style tab from here. First of all, I'm changing the icon color to hash 93A2B8. That's kind of gray color. And here we can keep this spacing to 15, but size I'm making it to 30. Then let's open the content. Here, first of all, I don't want any space with the title. So here I'm making this spacing to zero. Then the title color, let's make it a less dark color like this. And then from the typography, I'm making the font size to 20 pixel. Then line height, let's first make it an EM and I'm making it 0 0.8. All right, let's now go under its advanced tab. First of all, I'm making the padding to 15 pixel. And then here with the background, I want to add a bit gray color. So let's scroll down from here, open the background. And from the background type, let's select the color. That's F7, F, A, F, C. And then I just want to add some border radius with the corners. So from here, open the borders and here I'm adding 12 pixel of border radius. All right, so far it looks good. And now I just want to duplicate this icon box couple more times. So let's duplicate it. I want to duplicate it three more times. So let's duplicate one more time. Then, you know, I just want to change all these icons and titles. So just click over here and you can change the icons from here. You can change the titles from this place. So here I'm just changing all these icons and headings really quickly. All right, so I have changed all the titles and icons. Now let's go to the right container. This is our right container. Let's select it. First of all, I just want to make the justify content to centered. Then within this right container, I want to take another inner container. So let's click on this plus icon and here I'm dragging this container within the right container here. Then from here, I'm setting its minimum height to 500 pixel and also I'm making the justify content to centered. 
and I want to add a pinkish kind of background color with this inner container. So go under style tab from here background type. Let's open the color picker. I'm adding hash f648bf. And then I want to add some border radius. So open the border here. I'm adding 20 pixel of border radius. Cool. Now within this container, click on this plus icon here. I'm dragging an image widget. Let's select an image. So here, first of all, I'm selecting this image. Click on insert media. It's actually looking good, but let's just go under style tab. I'm reducing its width to 90%. It's now looking much better. And with the image, I want to add some entrance animation. So go under advanced tab from here, open the motion effects. Here, the entrance animation, I'm adding fade in. All right, later we need to add more images here on the right container. I mean, within the right container, but I want to add the images later because, you know, we need to add some JS and CSS snippet here within the page. So before doing any other thing, I mean, before doing all other interactive options, I want to make it mobile responsive first. So to do it, you know, from here, from the left bottom side, click on the responsive mode. You see on the desktop, it's looking great. Now let's go to tablet device from here. On the tablet device, it's also looking great, but I think we need to reduce some spaces from left and right. And also we can reduce the font sizes of this icon boxes titles. Okay, so first of all, I'm selecting the main parent container, this one, go under its advanced tab. From here, I'm making the padding to 10 pixel. And then let's select this icon box, go under its style tab and open the content. Like I said, I just wanna reduce the title's font size. So from typography, I'm making the font size to 14 pixel. And I want to do the same with all other icon boxes. So just right click here, click on copy, then right click here, click on paste style. It's simple like that. So here, right click, click on paste style. I'm doing the same with all other icon boxes. Just right click and paste style, right click and paste style. Cool. So it's now looking great on tablet device as well. And finally, I want to also make it really cool on mobile device. So from here, click on mobile icon. Right now, it's looking like it on the mobile device, but I don't like it that much. So here, I want to do it mobile responsive in a very tricky way. So please follow this part very carefully. So first of all, I'm selecting the parent container that wraps all the icon boxes here. So let's select the container. It's basically the left container. I'm selecting it here go under layout on the mobile device i wanna set its direction to row and also i'm setting its align items to the start only for the mobile devices all right let's now go under its advanced tab here i'm making the padding to 5 pixel and then this one is important i'm also making its align self to start all right now to make it really good i wanna place this container at the bottom and this container at the top so to do it make sure you have selected this container and from here i'm changing the order to end so right now the portfolio images are at the top and the icon boxes are at the bottom all right now i just wanna make this icon boxes a bit smaller so let's select the icon box so here from under the style tab i'm making the spacing to zero and i'm reducing the size to 20. then open the content and with the titles typography here for the mobile device i'm making its font size to 12 pixel and here i'm increasing the line height to 1.2 em and then go under its advanced tab here, I'm making the padding to 10 pixel. So this is it. You know, we can just copy and paste the style with other icon boxes. So right click here, then copy it. Then right click on the other icon boxes and click on paste style. Let's do the same with other elements. So right click paste style. I'm doing the same with all other icon boxes like this. And then at the top, it's looking too much height. So make sure you have selected the inner container. Go under its layout tab instead of 500 for the mobile device. I'm making its height to 220 pixel. Then finally, the main parent container, this one, go under its layout instead of 100 VH. I'm making its height to 70 VH for mobile device. Just have a look on the mobile device. It's now really, really looking cool. So it's now looking great on mobile device, also on the tablet device, also on the desktop device for sure. 
All right, we can now close the responsive bar from top. Now I want to make this section interactive, but before that I want to duplicate this image couple more time. Have a look here on the left side, we have six icon boxes here. That's why we need to create six images on the right side. For that reason here, I'm duplicating it six times. Let's duplicate it couple more time like this. So here on the right side, we have one, two, three, four, five and six images. If you have more icon boxes on the left, for example, if you have eight icon boxes on the left side, then on the right side, you need to create eight images. Cool. And now I just wanna quickly replace these images with real images. All right, so I have replaced the six images with the real six images here. So I can say our layout is done. Now we need to do the interactive part. Let's now start with the left icon boxes. I'm selecting the first icon box from under its advanced tab. Let's scroll down. Now within the CSS classes here, I'm adding a class name and that would be my dash title. Remember, you need to write exactly this class name. Otherwise, the interaction won't work. And I want to do the same. I'm just copying this class name. Let's select the second icon box. Go under its advanced tab from here. Let's add the same class name here. So let's add the same class name with all the icon boxes here. Also with this one from here, let's add it with the fifth one, go under advanced tab. Let's add the class name also with the sixth one, go under advanced tab and let's add the class name. That's my dash title. Then go to the right side. Let's select this image from under its advanced tab. Let's scroll down with the image. We also need to add a class name and that would be my dash image so it's basically my dash img and you know i'm just copying this class name let's select the second image go under its advanced tab and let's add the same class name that would be my image and i'm doing the same with all other images i'm adding the same class name with the images let's select the fourth image go under advanced tab add the class name also with the fifth image go under advanced tab and add the class name here also with the sixth one go under advanced tab and here I'm adding the same class name that's my dash IMG. All right. And the next thing we need to add here a very simple jQuery snippet or JavaScript snippet. So to add that jQuery snippet, just click on this Rubik's cube icon and here I'm searching for HTML widget. And you know, you can add this HTML widget anywhere of the page. So here I just want to insert the HTML code underneath here. So I'm dragging the HTML underneath here in this place. Now within this HTML field, I want to insert that J snippet. So to get the snippet, you just need to go to jimfahaddigital.com. I will put this pages link in the description. So from that page, if you scroll down here under the interactive portfolio JS, let's just copy this whole JS snippet from here. Let's copy it, go inside Elementor and here inside I'm pasting the jQuery or JavaScript snippet. Still, we cannot see any changes here because right after that we need to add a CSS snippet as well. So I will be adding that CSS snippet with the main parent container. I mean with this one, let's select it, go under its advanced tab. Then from here, let's open the custom CSS field. By the way, custom CSS is only available on Elementor Pro. I will put my Elementor Pro affiliate link in the description. If you purchase Elementor Pro through my affiliate link, you don't have to pay any extra, but I will get a little credit for that. That will help me to continue this YouTube channel and make more interesting tutorials like this. All right, so get the CSS snippet. We can go to jimfaddigital.com again. Then from here, let's scroll down here underneath the interactive portfolio CSS. Let's just copy this whole CSS snippet from here. Now go inside Elementor and then paste the CSS snippet inside here. And don't get scared because at this moment we cannot see any image here on the right side. And actually you cannot see anything properly within Elementor page builder. We can see everything right on the real browser. So to see it's working perfectly, let's first save this page just by clicking on this green update button. Then to preview the page, click on this eyeball icon. And here we go. Now, if I hover over on any icon box from left side, we can see the image on the right. If I hover over on the third icon box, we can see the portfolio image here, similar like this. 
But here, if you notice, there is a little problem. That is, if I refresh the page again, just have a look now. Initially, no icon box is activated and initially we cannot see any image on the right side as well. So to fix it, let's now go inside Elementor Page Builder and this time I wanna take the help of the navigator. So just right click anywhere within the Elementor Page Builder and click on navigator. So here, let's say initially you just wanna activate the first icon box. On that case, you need to select the first icon box, go under its advanced tab and scroll down. You see here we have added a class name that's my dash title. But right after that, I want to add another class name and to add multiple class name within the single element. What you need to do is just after the previous class name here, I'm pressing space and then here I'm putting the second class name and that would be active. In the same way, from the right side, I want to make the first image initially visible. So for that reason, from the navigator, I'm selecting the first image from under its advanced tab here, you know, with the image, we have added the class name my dash image right after that I'm pressing space and here I'm adding the title to active. And by the way, don't get confused the behavior within the Elementor page builder because within Elementor page builder, it's not working perfectly. So please don't get confused within Elementor Page Builder. To check it in real browser, just update it again. And let's preview it now. And boom, here initially we can see the landing page icon box is activated and we can see the landing pages image on the right side. Also, if I hover over on any icon box, we can see the synchronous portfolio images on the right side here. If you're confused, I'm explaining it again. Let's say initially you don't want to activate the first one. So in that case, let's select the first icon box. So first of all, I'm just removing the active class from here. Instead, let's say you want to set the first icon box with this one. It says desktop app. So to do it, let's select the fifth icon box. This one from under its advanced tab right after my title here. I'm creating a space and type active as we have selected the fifth item. So from the right side, we need to add the active class with the fifth image. So first of all, let's select the first image. We need to remove the active class from here. So let's select the fifth image and with the fifth images classes here, I'm adding the active class. Let's now update it to save our work. Then if we preview it right now, See here initially we can see that desktop app icon box is activated. Also on the right side, we can see that desktop app portfolio image on the right side. This is basically how it works. I hope you have learned something new today. If you like it, please give this video a big thumb up and don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also press on that notification bell icon to get notified before anyone whenever I will upload a new video on this YouTube channel. Also, if you want me to help you on your WordPress project or Elementor project, then you can contact me through my website. That's jimfahaddigital.com. I will try my best to help you personally. Once again, thank you so much for watching this full tutorial. I will see you in the next video. For now, bye-bye.